from a very small town in Australia in Queensland called Morkeston with only 3,000 people, so a lot smaller than the villages that you have here. And I'm a country girl, you know, I grew up with two older brothers, always outdoors, playing sports, and, uh, you know, my family, they were very entrepreneurial. We owned hotels, um, and unfortunately, there was a global financial crisis, and we lost everything. Overnight, we became bankrupt. So my mum and dad, they packed us up in seven suitcases, and we traveled to my dad's hometown in Auckland, and we started afresh. But at two years old, my dad left. So my mum packed us up again back to Australia, and we started again. My mum, a single mum, raising three children, working full time. You know, she was always so hard working. Every day we would get home, we'd have a home cooked meal on the table at 6 30 pm on the dot, and we'd sit as a family. And I was very inspired by her. She was always very driven, positive, and always hard working. You know, I, was, uh, I followed in her footsteps. You know, I was always. I was always trying to, you know, do something else. You know, when I was 14, I got my first job outside of school. Uh, by the age of 18, I was working five jobs so that I could save up enough money. I bought my first property at 18 years old and then second at 20. And, you know, all the time I was kind of, I don't know, searching for my passion, I suppose. You know, I was very creative and I used to enter these kind of random competitions in magazines where, you know, you write 25 words or less. And, you know, if you won, I won, I won one particular competition where I flew to Sydney to watch a fashion show. And when I was in the audience, a lady came up to me and she tapped me on the shoulder and she said, are you a model? And I was like, no, what do you mean? I don't even know what a model is or that it could be a full-time job. And she said to me, go into this modeling agency, tell them that I sent you. And I went there the next day, I couldn't find a place that was completely lost, this little country girl, never been to the big smoke, and I'm ringing my mum, there's no Google Maps back then, so I'm ringing my mum, and she's saying, okay, turn left here, turn right there, and I finally enter the agency, and I walk in, and the first thing they say to me is, go to the bathroom, scrub all your makeup off your, off your face, and I was instantly was feeling even more and more nervous, so I washed my face, and I went in, and then I was standing on a blank wall, and they're taking polaroids of me. And I was so nervous that my teeth were chattering. I couldn't even smile. And so they took my photos. They went back and they left me there for about 30 minutes. And they came back and they had a piece of paper. It was a contract to start as a model immediately. So I flew back to my mum. And I was like, mum, I've got this contract. What do I do? So I took all my savings. I packed up everything and I moved to Sydney. I didn't know a single person at all. It was uh, very daunting, and my agency kind of became my family, and I started traveling across the world. So my first uh, international trip was to Germany, a non-English speaking country, and Hamburg. And I remember, you know, it was so daunting. I was like, I'm never getting on a plane ever again. I was freaking out about everything. And I remember just sitting down one of the first nights, couldn't speak to the people that I was living with, because they didn't speak English and I didn't speak German. But I remember this one dish, you know, it was, it was kind of like a bit of an epiphany, you know. Food has no language. And we were sitting around the table and enjoying this beautiful, it was like a warm cucumber dill dish. It was so strange. Never had anything like it. But it was amazing. And it kind of inspired me. I then, uh, so, I then kind of came back to Australia. And um, I was doing multiple different things, you know, I was doing, always doing different courses. I studied to be a makeup artist, I studied to be a nail technician, a photography course, a writing course, and, you know, nothing ever stuck. I wasn't, you know, I was always looking for that, uh, you know, something tangible, something that was creative, but couldn't find it. And then I had my son, and, you know, he was such an incredible boy, and, you know, I always wanted to cook everything for him. I always wanted to like, I never wanted to give him any jars or, you know, anything artificial in food, so I started cooking, and I realized, I was like, wow, you know, I'm starting to like this a lot, and, you know, I'd be at photo shoots for, you know, the entire day, and I'd come home, and I'd be cooking three course meals for, for dinner, you know, <laughs> and I was like, okay, this is turning into something, and so my son's grandparents are actually from Punjab. So they're living in London, um, and we decided to go and live with them in London. So I remember 
to fix his grandma would be in the kitchen, you know, she'd have a pot in front of her, she'd be throwing in all these spices and she'd be watching a Bollywood movie on the left and I was like, what, what is this cooking you're doing? You know, I'm always reading recipes and, you know, doing everything specifically to the tea and she's just, you know, kind of like a little magician in the kitchen and I'm standing there with a notepad and pen writing everything down and, you know, I just, I was getting more and more into cooking and I was at this photo shoot one day and I was standing there and it was a very monotonous photo shoot actually. I was shooting about 60 different items. So you imagine there's a camera, there's a, a light on your left and there's a camera in front of you and you're kind of just doing the same pose. <laughs> All day, 60 different outfits. And I just remember I got, got to lunch and I'm sitting there and I was like, if I'm away from my son, I want to be doing something that I'm, I'm loving, you know, and I just wasn't feeling it with modeling, and I wasn't traveling so much anymore, you know, I wanted to be with him. So I sat there, and I, you know, there was a model sitting next to me, and I said to him, I'm going to study cooking, and I'm going to apply to the court and blur, and I remember him saying, he's like, you're going to become the next night and I was like, ooh, <laughs> that's something I can aspire to. So that night I went home, and I applied for the court and blur, and I got in and I started studying and again, you know, everything that I do, I do it to my best ability and I put everything into it. I was topping my class. Um, you know, I studied for a year and I uh, got my, uh, you know, I, I finished my course and I got back home and I was like, okay, what do I do now? So I was like, I have a year, I gave myself a year. I was, I was like, if I'm going to do this, then I've got a year to do it. I mean, as long as I can survive on the money that I'm going to pay. So I uh, decided to apply for MasterChef. And you know, I never felt like I was good enough to get into MasterChef. I don't know if you've all seen MasterChef, but you know, the level of these cooks is insane. And you know, I would watch the mystery box challenges at home. And you know, just when I knew that I'd gotten into MasterChef, I watched one of these challenges and I saw them lift the box off the mystery box. And I looked at the ingredients and I started crying. I was like, I can't think of anything to cook. How am I going to do this? I'm like, I'm for sure they can have recipes in MasterChef and, you know, be able to run back, plan what they want to cook and come back in. And when I started in MasterChef, I was, I was pretty overwhelmed. I had nerves every day. I was feeling very anxious. You know, as you see it on the show, it's exactly how it is. When that mystery box gets lifted off, you have to start. You've got one hour and you have to create a dish. And... I was like, I need to figure out a way to, you know, just get through this and be able to think straight and, uh, you know, develop dishes. And I remember the first challenge, I made this dish and all I was thinking was, please don't choose me, please don't choose me because it was terrible. And so I started working out these different kind of methods in my head to be able to create dishes. So I, you know, went to MasterChef and I remember there was this one challenge where I walked up, I took my dish to the judges and I put it down, they tasted it, and they were blown away. And they said to me, they said, oh, they said to all of the contestants, they said, who in this room thinks that Sarah is the biggest threat in the competition? And I turned around, and every single hand was in the air. And I was like, wow, you know, it's kind of like a validation, I suppose. You know, it gave me the confidence to, you know, that I can do this. And I always said to myself that, once I started cooking, I want to be the best chef. You know, I, I want to be in the kitchen, I want to be cooking. You know, I'm instantly, because of your looks of being female, people are, are instantly going to think, she can't cook, you know? <laughs> so, and I had that, and I had a lot of comments online, and they thought I was planted in the competition, and I was like, no, this is hard work, and, you know, I'm trying my best to be the best chef out there. So after Master Chef, and uh, one of the episodes I cooked Alagobi, so you all know, a village too from Punjab, Punjab. And the night that episode aired in India, I had 50,000 followers on my social media overnight from India. And I was like, what? Is this fair? What's going on? So I thought, you know what, I'm going to plan a, a trip to India. So I booked my ticket and I linked up with a hotel saying, and I did multiple cities, and when and I had no idea what I was going to end up. I'd never been to India before. I didn't know if you know really people were watching MasterChef. But when I landed, 
I had people coming up to me in the airport, you know, asking me for autographs and photos, and I was like, well, I don't even know what an autograph is. Do I give you my signature? Like, I don't know. And, you know, and I was just so blown away. You know, there was this one um, particular tweet that I read that said, uh, India has adopted you as their very own daughter-in-law. And I just remember feeling so, you know, warm. The culture is just so beautiful. Every city you go to, people are in love with food. You know, they talk about food. They know everything about food. And it was just very inspiring for me. So one of my uh, trips, one of my cities that I went to, I met a restaurant son. So his name is Ashish Kapoor. And I, so they called him up. I was in the restaurant having dinner. And they called him up and said, there's this girl from MasterChef, she's here, you should come meet her. And he said, oh, I'm tired, I can't come in now. Just, you know, make sure you look after it and give her a good time. And so he hung up the phone. And then his son said to him, Dad, who was it? And he said, oh, this girl from MasterChef, Jelly Sarah Todd. And he was like, go in there, you need to go and meet her. And so he walked in and when he got there, again, you know, I was surrounded by people. And he was like, wow, you know, he hadn't even watched MasterChef, so he was like, you know, something going on here. So anyway, we chatted, got along. I flew back to Australia and he called me out one day and he said, Sarah, I'm standing in this property in Goa and I want to open a restaurant and I want to do it with you. And I was like, you're mad. You're not moving to the other side of the world to open a restaurant in India. You're crazy. And he said, trust me, just come in, see the property and make up your mind. And I just remember walking into an entire from Goa at home not entirely to this point, but walking into the property and I was just blown away. I was overlooking the ocean, it's stunning. You know, I just had this warm feeling about it. So I was like, I'm just going to go for it. You know, I think um, I didn't have enough time to really think about it. And, you know, I moved there a few months later and uh, started to build. I said to him, you know, the only way I'll open this restaurant is if I have a say in everything. You know, I'm not going to just come in and put my name and, you know, let it just happen. I want every single detail to be how I want it, to be a high quality and to be, you know, mine. And so he was like, sure, do it. <laughs> so I moved over to India and it took about seven months to build. And every day was hard, you know, and it, it was a massive struggle. There's the language barrier. You know, I don't speak Hindi. Um, a different culture, different ways of working, and I struggled a lot. And, you know, I brought over five staff from Australia. All of them flew home, none of them could cope. You know, they were away from everything, and I was the last one standing, you know, and it's my baby, so I'm obviously not going to leave. So, uh, you know, I was struggling a lot. You know, I was away from my family, everything that I knew, and I'm in this country, and nothing was going right. You know, we had so many complaints, the menu wasn't right. And I remember I was lying in bed this one day, I had a broken toe, and I was feeling sorry for myself, and I was like, I don't know if I can do this anymore, I think I want to go back to Australia. Anyway, I'm, I'm not a quitter, I'll always follow everything through. So I sprayed myself off the bed, and I went into Antares, and I was running dishes from the past, and this girl came up to me, and she tapped me on the shoulder, and she said, man, this my friend is here, we've traveled for eight hours by road to come and meet you. And my friend's there and she wants to meet you. And I said, sure, of course. You know, and I walked over to meet her. And when I got there, I was ready to say hi and I saw her. And she was bawling her eyes out. She was so excited by my journey. You know, she'd watched me from MasterChef. And it was like this light bulb moment. I realized that, you know, it's not about me anymore. You know, I'm inspiring young girls in an age where it's difficult, you know, and that women need to be empowered and they need to, you know, be self-sufficient. They can't rely on other people. And, you know, I realized it's just not about me. And, you know, it gave me this new kind of power to, to push forward and, you know, to continue in the industry. And from there, I've gone on now to open up three different restaurants I shot seven television shows and written a cookbook and, you know, lots of things. So I think, yeah, it was it was a big realization and it's never been easy and uh, it's never been a straight line, actually. In January, uh, Antares actually burned down. There was a freak accident next door to our property that um, someone was clearing the land and just flew over onto our property in three different spots. And I had just been there for a staff party. 
and I was going home and then I got this picture sent to me with the roof on fire and I quickly turned around and I drove back to the restaurant and I watched it burn down to the ground completely. And you know, it's, it's been such an emotional thing for me to see and even since then, I go up and down all the time in my, you know, it was the thing that brought me to India four years ago. And it's very emotional and it's, I'm very attached to it. It's like a second baby. And I just, you know, how do you go on from that? I have had to build the strength, you know. I have so many other projects that I'm working on that, you know, I've needed to push through this pain, I suppose. And, you know, I realized that there's a lot of ups and downs in the road. But one thing that you do need to invest in is yourself. Because no one can take that away from you. And it's something that I've learned to just continue building yourself, building your strength. Know that you have a lot of people around you that are going to help support you, but people are going to come and go. So you need to have the strength to carry on and take the torch and carry on and move forward. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you so very much. And it's just a key thing to see the stage and joining her is none other than a fresh fund. The Indian Academy folk critic and a social historian we all know for candid chat with Sarah. May I request all of you to please put your hands together for this time.
I'm racking my brain thinking, what gastronomy am I going to use for dinner and all of this? But it's like, no, you know, I'm cooking for my family and I want to have, you know, an emotion with it. I want to enjoy this with my family. So it's nostalgia. You know, and, and on top of that, you know, it's, it's not just nostalgia, it's the entire experience. And, you know, when it comes to the restaurant, people say to me, uh, do you judge a dish at a, at a restaurant? But it's, it's not about judging a dish, it's an experience. And, you know, when I, when I was developing Antares, it wasn't just the, the menu that I was developing, it was the entire experience. You know, so I wanted, you know, the visual element of the place to feel like indoors, outdoors. I wanted to be very earthy and why to be, you know, I feel like it's very important to uh, take an element of where you are, you know, and, and incorporate that into whatever you do. So if I'm cooking dishes um, for people in India, I want to take a sense of something local. So in every restaurant that I've opened, I've spent months traveling around that area in particular, mixing with the locals, taking their influence, seeing what they like to eat, and developing my own cuisine, because ultimately I can't compete with all these grandmas and generations of business, but, you know, I think it's important that you respect that culture and add it to food. So I actually, when I was developing a menu for Empire in the beginning, I wrote up when I was in Australia, and I flew to India, and I landed, and I tore the piece of paper in half, because ultimately produce is different, people's palates are different, you know, it doesn't matter what country you go to, you're, you know, I think it's my in Australia, or in Italy, or in India, it's completely different, so you need to, you know, spend that time, get into the hot food, so I actually went to a, an orphanage in Goa, and there were all these children, little girls, they're about 6 to 13 years old, and I took them for So I took the rock tea with eggs, and salad, and father and mother. So they ate all the rock tea, all the salad. The only thing that was left was the masala and the lime. So they got the salad, they put it on the lime, and they cut it. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is what I did to my son to make him cry. <laughs> you know, and it's this moment where I realized, you know, from six years old, the flavors that these children are having are so much stronger than the ones they had in Australia. So, you know, it's important to get into the culture of other place and, and, you know, delegate to it. Well, I have a